You're listening to The Framework of Tomorrow, hosted by Keegan Goldfarb and brought to you by Radley Network, and our sponsor, Ashley Luann Kay, who is a nurse on the road to achieving higher education and guiding others along the way. If you are interested in achieving higher education, go check out Ashley Luann Kay on YouTube and enjoy this episode of The Framework of Tomorrow. And welcome to another episode of The Framework of Tomorrow. I am your host, Keegan Goldfarb, and this is episode four. Like always, uh, I am a part of a network of podcasters called Rally Network. You can check us out at rallynetwork.net. We are a group of podcasters who all have the same goal of initiating conversation and Um, making thought-provoking content and wanting to kind of educate uh, others and kind of make uh, everybody think about some some really crucial topics that we have today. We have um, one of my favorites is BRCM. Uh, The two hosts of that show are Mike Shermack and Gracie Shermack. They are brother and sister. They have an amazing, amazing podcast. They talk about all sorts of topics, but um, they they really have a goal for initiating thought and kind of educating people on certain topics. So today is going to be about mental health. So I'm sure a lot of you are aware that there has been a lot of mental health um, kind of topics and things that have came up in this last century even this last decade here. So why why in this last decade has there been a a massive a massive spike of mental health? If you didn't know that, there has been a pretty big um, mental health rise in this past decade. I'm sure you know people who have different kinds of mental health, whether that's anxiety, depression, or um anything else it's it's becoming super um kind of aware that there are some serious mental health problems out there we actually have a whole month coming up here in may uh may is mental awareness month so if you know anyone or you are personally um if you personally have mental health problems uh, i kind of want to talk today about some of them and kind of educate people on what this means and um, what it can kind of implicate for our our future here. So before I get into talking about mental health in today's time, I want to kind of give a brief history of mental health. So before we had more um, of an understanding of what mental health was, in history we've dealt with mental health mental health in a variety of very 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 different ways so one of the first ways we dealt with it and and let me state that these um are not the most um it's a, it's a little i'm going to try to leave out as many like graphic ways um that they have been kind of dealing with this i'm going to leave out most of that Uh, except for this first one here. The first thing we kind of see pop up in history of them dealing with people dealing with mental health is something they called um, trifination. Trifination. This is the earliest form of mental healthness that we see. We see it on um, cave wall drawings and some of the early civilizations started using this. So what they would do 
for people who had different kinds of mental health. One of the examples was um, epilepsy is they believed that these people, because they were having problems mentally, they're like, what's going on here? Like, why, why are these, what's going on? So what they kind of deduced after thinking about it is that these people had demons or spirits that had kind of gone into their head. And this is how, this is how they, they dealt with this. They would drill holes into people's skulls to allow the demons or spirits to be released to basically, that's how they were like, okay, this is how we're going to cure, cure them where we got to release them. I mean, that's a really like primitive way of looking at it, but I guess I can kind of see where they're coming from if they did believe they were demons or spirits, but it's just horrible, horrible, horrible on people who have um, pretty common problems today. Like, epilepsy I, I know multiple people who have um problems with epilepsy and um yeah it's just crazy that that would even remotely go to what um they would go to the second one we see pop up kind of when um the egyptian culture the egyptians are kind of um becoming a more i guess i don't know if i'd call it civilized but um, they're kind of the biggest, um, the first civilization we see, uh, which is Egypt. And they, they had a certain thing that the Greeks later called hysteria, which now we call today conversion disorder. Hysteria was basically when, uh, a human would become paralyzed in certain parts of their body. And it messed with basically the nervous system of the human uh, it affected different parts of the body, could affect the whole body. Uh, but yes, so hysteria here. This is what the Greeks later called what they were explaining, and now what we call conversion disorder. What they, what the Egyptians believed, they believed this was all caused, and it, they believed it was only caused in women at the time. They believed it was called something, they, they called it the wandering uterus. They basically believed that the uterus would go to different parts of the body and that's why that certain part wouldn't work like their leg if their leg stopped working the uterus went into their leg so they had some pretty uh they had different treatments to trying to figure out like how to fix this um the less graphic one <laughs> that i have here today is they would actually take different kinds of scents and place them on parts of the body, some scents would attract. So they would put maybe um, like a scent, uh, like on, on where the uterus is supposed to be maybe. And then they had these different scents that would deter the uterus. So it would like, they try to guide it back in to its spot. Obviously it never left. Um, and yeah, it's kind of crazy. But probably one of the biggest um, explanations we had in early history that people came up with for the long the probably the longest held belief um is supernatural reasons so for a very 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 long time throughout history if anyone had mental health it was um kind of like the first one where it was mental it, it was um they would they would thought it was like demons or spirits that were possessing them so they drilled holes in their skulls Except, I mean, they would just try to like pray it out or sadly they would end up um, killing them. Like if anyone had some weird mental health problem that they couldn't, well, they thought it was, it was weird. It was abnormal. And basically what they would do is they would either, they would either kill them or they would try to pray it out and be like spirits leave um, leave this human pretty crazy stuff. But that was, that was probably the most widely accepted, uh, treatment for, or treatment or reason for mental health throughout history. Um, until, uh, the 18th century. So finally, after, uh, probably in the, in the 17th century, people were more, they were still, killing them or putting them into mental, um, mental wards, mental health 
wards or asylums, um, putting them in there. But once we hit the 18th century, people started being like, okay, uh, let's take a more humanitarian view on this. And they actually started doing research on people and uh, kind of figuring out different ways that they can treat these certain problems that were coming up and they had no uh, explanation for what what in the world was going on here so that's kind of how we are at the point where we are today because now we have a more humanitarian view we're not killing people who have depression or anxiety problems because we're like oh my gosh they're weird um instead it's actually become extremely common uh especially depression and anxiety and I kind of wanted to look at today, why are we seeing this all pop up now? Why, like we haven't, it wasn't as much as a problem in, uh, say, like the 1900s that we know of. I mean, people still had it, but is it becoming, is it just because we're like becoming more aware of mental health and we're um, just being more on top of that? Is that why we're seeing more cases or is it from other things? So, uh, one of the things I found was that the rate of individuals reporting symptoms uh, consistent with, with major depression in the last 12 months months increased 52% in adolescence from 2005 to 2017. So, from 2005 to 2017, there has been a 52% increase in depression in adolescence. So that was from a 8.7 geez. Okay. Yeah. And 63% of young adults 18 uh, age 18 to 25 from 2009 to 2017 um it was also a pretty major jump. So why why are we seeing this? What's going on? Why why are all of the younger um, people from the age of um, 25 and younger, why are we seeing these depression and anxiety rates? Well, there's not one single answer for this. Uh, Another thing I found was that cultural trends in the last 10 years may have had a larger effect on mood disorders and suicide related outcomes among younger, younger generations compared with older generations. So, one of the things we're seeing here and kind of what we're hearing from from this um, quote there was it's become uh, part of our, I guess, generation for these to come up. And, you, you know, like what's causing that in our generation? Why? Why is this? Why is this popping up? And one of the main ways we explain uh, depression or anxiety uh, which this this is true, but uh, it's not always the case. One of the major, uh, or one of not one of the major, one of the um, the reasons depression or anxiety can occur in a in a human being is one of the reasons is from a genetic imbalance, uh, which has been a pretty widely accepted. Um, cause, and they're like, okay, that's that's it. Like, if you have depression, like that's it. But what some people are saying now is that's not only it. You could also have um, depression or anxiety from something else. And here's what scientists believe this is being caused by now. By people, it's by how people are spending their time uh, after work or after school. And it could also be caused by, um, by your economic situation. Uh, like the, of the country, how you're living, like your living situations, it can be caused by that as well. Like these things can come on because of that. It's not only from uh, genetic imbalance. It can also be just how your life is being lived. And one of the major things, and I know a lot of people um, don't, I, I don't know. Personally, I don't really like, I guess this st- statistic um, or like, I guess it's kind of, I don't know. Anyway, it's major. They're saying it's majorly due 
because of electronic communication. See, some people will just be like, oh, it's because of the electronics because you're playing too many video games. Well, that's technically not wrong. It's not specifically just because of that. Like, it's multiple, multiple things. And that's it. I don't like when people do that because it's like, oh, video games are bad. Like, I don't think video games, anything, uh, anything too much of something, it can always be bad. So I say if maybe you're playing too much video games, then yeah, it, it can definitely be a count. But yes, anyway, so from electronic communication, basically how we socialize as a whole. So like after work, are you going to hang out with friends in person or are you going home and watching Netflix and texting your friends on the couch or in your bed? Uh, And like after school, same thing. Are you going to hang out with your friends after school or are you going directly home and like and just sitting on video games by yourself and you're texting your friends online. I think there's something to be said about going and playing like video games with your friends. I don't think that has a cause on it. And I don't think that's what they're saying either. I think they're just saying um, isolation is a big, big key thing um, in this. And that can happen through, um, I mean, anything. It couldn't even be related to electronics it just happens to be that way because that's just how most people are spending their time alone like you could just completely isolate yourself without electronics and i think you could probably see a pretty similar um pretty similar range of uh, how mental health is being affected by this so whether or not like it like i said as well it can also be affected by how your family life is going, how your friends are going, your love life. It could be affected by that. Your financial situation. If you're having a hard time with money, it can also be done through that. Um, But here are some are negative ways that uh, mental health is being influenced in people's lives. One of the big ones, and I am also personally guilty of this, is sleep schedules. So being on an electronic about I think it's a half an hour to an hour before you go to bed can kind of mess up like your how you sleep not how you sleep but how you fall asleep so it's harder for you to fall asleep if you have been looking at a screen because of the blue light Um, they do have certain filters on phones to do that now Um, but just in general it's not a super good thing to be on your phone, laying in bed, um, it's going to affect how you sleep and that can affect your sleep schedule. You could be getting less sleep because of that. And, um, that's just, it's just not good for your head. And like, if you wake up in the middle of the night, uh, and it's like 3am, sure. You can check the time. You can look at your phone and be like, Oh, it's 3am. I'm going to go back to bed. But some people will just pick up their phone and start going through Instagram or whatever at three in the morning. That's not going to be good for your head. Um, yes. So sleep schedules, big thing. Being isolated from others, like I said, is one of the big reasons, uh, this can happen. So maybe trying to take steps on, uh, kind of not being as isolated. So maybe asking your friends, you're like, Hey, can we go hang out? Or even, even just going outside, not necessarily even just by yourself. Uh, it can be by yourself, but also just like being out there and seeing other humans and kind of maybe like wave over to that guy who's, well, I don't know, say hello to the guy you're, you're walking past. It's just social interaction helps fight against that. Um, and that's a pretty big thing. Social media. This is a, a pretty big one. And there's a lot of different studies on how this affects different people. It can affect like even differences between, um, men and women. It can, completely like cause anxiety, severe anxiety. And I know a lot of, uh, men and women, this is a big cause, um, social media. It's, I I can tell you this, I have taken breaks from social media and I have felt million times better. I don't know why, honestly, why I even go back most of the time, but, uh, social media can be a big cause. Actually, the last time I was at the doctors, my doctor asked me, Um, and apparently they do this to people who are under the age of 25, 
they're like, hey, are you on social media? Like, are you being, are you healthily being on social media? Because a lot of people will just scroll through um, TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat. They'll be on it for just hours upon hours. And I am guilty of that. Um, and that can play a major cause in like how you feel. And that's, uh, that's a pretty major, major thing that we're, we're dealing with here, especially my generation. Um, we are spending a lot more time on social media and, uh, so yeah, like what can we do about this? You're, you might be you're sitting in your, in your bed maybe right now listening to this or in your living room doing some work, you know, and you're wondering, okay, you got all these statistics, you got all these things, obviously, uh, we're spending some unhealthy time on electronics. What can we do? How, how can we combat against this? So kind of my first thing is go interact with people on more of a daily basis. Obviously, um, if you're listening to this now or maybe in the future, then you don't have to deal with this. But the coronavirus is a pretty, it's kind of really hard to do this during this time because we're not supposed to go out and see other people. I mean, you could do social distancing and uh, stand six feet away from them. But I- even in this time, uh, you should still be going outside. And this is obviously a super hard time. And I know a lot of people are going to develop some mental health problems during this time because we are not, we're not in our daily schedules and um, we can't go out and see as many people as we normally can. Secondly, uh, this goes for both right now in the problem of coronavirus when we have to social distance and later set time limits on your phone i am guilty of not doing this um i actually just downloaded an app the other day uh from uh, suggested from my friend and it you can like uh i don't know it's kind of like a game it's called forest you like build or you you like set a time on your phone you like set an hour uh and you don't, you don't touch your phone for an hour and it will grow a tree or something like that. Um, I'm not saying you have to do that, but just don't be on your phone as much as um, you normally are. There's unhealthy amounts of spending time on phone and there's healthy amounts. I know in some phones, at least on my phone, in the settings, you can actually see how much you're on your phone a day. Um, I had a friend who looked at his and he was it was like 8, 10 hours and that's ridiculous. That's insane. That's a long time on your phone for one day. Um, and that's like, it's crazy. So set time limits on your phone, only be on your phone for like essential reasons. Like, um, maybe you're texting your friend or something, or like, don't just scroll through social media forever or watch YouTube for hours. Set a healthy limit on your phone, have a healthier sleep schedule. Like I said before, I am guilty of this. Um, maybe set a time when you're going to go to bed and when you're going to wake up so you don't oversleep or undersleep and make sure you're not on your phone during those times. Uh, and here, another one is to be active. I am not a, like, I don't go work out or whatever. I don't, I don't do that. Um, and I'm, if you are like that, then awesome. You're being active. Go do that. I am not like that but I can still be active. I can still go on walks or I like to longboard. That's not, I don't think that's necessarily working out, but that's going and being active. Take a bike ride, go out with um, your brother or walk your dog or go say hi to the neighbor, maybe go on a little walk with them. Uh, Like I said, that might be a little hard right now, but just you can, even though all of this is going on, you you can still go on a walk. Um, And I think that's a healthy thing to do and to keep your mental health kind of um, up. I think that's definitely a big thing you can do right now. Probably my last and biggest thing that you can do is go check out my my friend. Uh, Like I said, go check out my friend, Mike, BRCM. He is on Rally Network. Go to rallynetwork.net. You can find him. He's the first one there. Go check him out, BRCM. He's awesome. He does a um, a series called Goip, which is get off your phone. And he, he does this every Monday. He uploads uh, every weekday, Monday through Friday. And every Monday they have the series, get off your phone, where he talks about practical ways to get um, you know, off your phone, spend less time on your phone and why it's bad to spend time on your phone. 
um, well, not all, all time on your phone, but just healthy ways to spend time on your phone. So if you want to hear more about that, definitely, definitely, definitely go check out BRCM on any podcasting platform you can think of or go to rallynetwork.net and check out him, not only him, but uh, all the other amazing podcasters on that site. They're amazing. Go check them out. And yeah, so now that we talked about he- mental health, um, I I really just think if we can kind of follow those, the things that I said, and you can even go do some of your own research uh, on how to spend less time on your phone and how to get your mental health up and just be educated. Now that we're coming around May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, um, you can go check that out uh, pretty much anywhere. Just type into Google how to maintain your mental health. It's great. Uh, and as always, I end my episodes with a history fact of the day. So today we have a pretty crazy history fact. So back in World War II, when we were fighting the Japanese, um, American soldiers, what they used to do to get to the Japanese to peek up, kind of peek up around corners or kind of, um, get out of their, get out of cover is they would actually take, uh, their gun clips. They would take empty ones, um, empty clips, uh, and they'd throw them at rocks. So it would mimic, mimic, uh, the kind of ping that a M1, um, grand would do when it's out of ammo. It would be like a kind of a spring sound like ting. And if they would take those empty clips and threw them at rocks, it would make that sound. So then the Japanese, um, they'd peek up over the corner or like over wherever they were hiding. And then, uh, the U S soldiers would get them. So that's kind of a crazy history fact that, uh, they used to do. Uh, bet you didn't learn that in, in, your history in high school or maybe not even in college who knew but yeah thank you so much for being here Uh, i hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, talking about mental health and what we can do today um, what they did in the past and now what we can do tomorrow Um, i am keegan goldfarb like i said thank you so much for listening go check out uh, rallynetwork.net and we will see you next week for episode five Rally Podcasting Network, your favorite podcast rallied into one place.